Did you know that 70% of NCLEX test takers miss at least one question on electrolyte imbalances or acid-base disturbances? These are some of the trickiest questions which require you to think critically and not just memorize facts. But don't worry, I've got you covered. I'll break down this topic into simple, logical and methodical way so that you can understand it in a better way. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Mona Lisa and I'm here to help you crack the NCLEX exam. And if you've been following along, then you know that we've already covered prioritization, pharmacology, infection control and safety. If not, then go and check it out. But today's episode is extra special episode. You know why? Because this is one of the most tested topics of NCLEX exam. Yes, we are talking about physiological adaptation. This means dealing with critical conditions and emergencies. Think about those moments where nurses need to act fast. You know, EKG interpretations, electrolyte imbalances, acid-base shifts, chest tubes. Oh my God, those are so many things to handle with. These are the make or break questions which can really test your critical thinking. But before we get into the nitty gritty of this episode, let's just take a pause and give a huge shout out to Harin's Dance Studio for correctly answering the challenge question from last episode. Let's have a look. Here's the question for you. A nurse is about to administer an IM injection to a patient. Which of the following actions is correct? A. Recap the needle after the injection. B. Dispose of the needle immediately in a sharps container without recapping. C. Leave the needle on the bedside table until documentation is complete. D. Remove the needle cap using teeth if struggling with gloves. And the correct answer is option B. That's right. Always dispose of sharp needles immediately after use. Never ever recap. This is an easy and commonly tested question in NCLEX exam and you need to keep yourself updated as well as take care of your patients. First up, acid-base imbalances. The NCLEX loves to test you whether you know how to read ABG results. For that, you need to learn the good old Rome method. You don't know what's that? Check it out. Rome, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. In respiratory acidosis, pH is low and carbon dioxide is high. Think of hypoventilation, COPD or drug overdose. In respiratory alkalosis, pH is high, carbon dioxide is low. This is seen in hyperventilation or panic attacks. For metabolic acidosis, pH is low and bicarbonate level is low. This happens in DKA, renal failure or severe diarrhea. And finally, metabolic alkalosis has a high pH and high bicarbonate levels seen in excessive vomiting or diuretic use. Here's a quick tip for you. In diabetic ketoacidosis, also known as DKA, you have to know the concept of Kusmal breathing, which involves deep and rapid kind of breathing. So when you're going through the lesson of diabetic ketoacidosis, make sure you cover the point of Kusmal breathing. I hope that wasn't too difficult for you. <laughs> Here's a quick NCLEX style question for you. A patient presents with the following arterial blood gas results, which is also known as ABG results, where pH is 7.31, partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 50, and bicarbonate level is 24. How should the nurse interpret these findings? A metabolic acidosis, B, 
respiratory acidosis c metabolic alkalosis d respiratory alkalosis now you know the drill you have to pause the video think about the question wisely and then resume it and the correct answer is definitely option b respiratory acidosis the ph is below the normal range which is 7.35 to 7.45 which indicates acidosis the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is elevated suggesting a respiratory origin and the bicarbonate is within normal limits which indicates no metabolic compensation therefore these abg results are consistent with respiratory acidosis next up electrolyte imbalances this is very important segment of this topic and you need to know these basic um, lab values and those are did you know that at least 10 to 15 percent of nclex questions require you to interpret lab values whether it's fluid and electrolytes kidney function or blood disorders knowing lab values can make or break your exam so without wasting any time grab a notebook because i'll make this super easy to remember with mnemonics tricks and some real nclex style question do you want to know the trick to remember the electrolytes yes then go through this little maggie is 1.5 to 2.5 years old she ate 3.5 to 5 bananas and drank 8.5 to 10.5 oz of milk then she took a 135 to 145 hour nap after swimming in the ocean here maggie refers to magnesium and the normal value is 1.5 to 2.5 similarly bananas refer to potassium as you all know banana is rich in potassium and the normal range for that is 3.5 to 5 then obviously as we all know milk has calcium in it and the normal range for calcium is 8.5 to 10.5 and then ocean water has salty water which means sodium and the normal range for sodium is 135 to 145 isn't it interesting i used this mnemonic technique for my prep and guess what it worked now let's get back to our practice question for this segment a patient with a history of chronic kidney disease reports muscle weakness and palpitations. The nurse notes peaked T waves on the ECG. Which electrolyte imbalance is most likely? Option A, hypokalemia. Option B, hyperkalemia. C, hypocalcemia. D, hypernatremia. Now pause the video. Think about the answer and then resume of course the answer is b hyperkalemia peaked t waves on an ecg are a classic sign of hyperkalemia patients with chronic kidney disease are at a risk for elevated potassium levels due to impaired renal excretion now let's talk about ekg interpretation don't panic i'll help you i'll make it easier for you the nclex often tests you whether you can recognize lethal arrhythmias yes arrhythmias so the nclex loves asking about cardiac emergencies and you must be able to recognize these rhythms fast i'm going to break it down for you with simple tricks real NCLEX style questions and easy mnemonics to help you remember. These four lethal rhythms can appear on the NCLEX and you'll need to know what they look like, how to recognize them and what to do next. Ventricular tachycardia, also known as VTAC, the fast and deadly one. Patients going through VTAC will have bizarre and wide QRS complex. How to recognize it? It will look like tombstones or a row of mountains on the EKG. The NCLEX tip for this is, for stable VTAC where pulse is present, give amiodarone. And for unstable VTAC where pulse is not present, 
defibrillate the patient as soon as possible. Now let's talk about ventricular fibrillation, also known as VFib, the deadliest one. Patients having ventricular fibrillation will have very high heart rate, you know, like 300 to 600 beats per minute, but it will be very irregular and the rhythm will be chaotic and disorganized. Now you must be thinking how to recognize it. Well, it looks like a child scribbled all over the EKG paper. Yes. Now the NCLEX tip is, in VFib, there's no pulse. Then start CPR and defibrillate immediately. And the drug of choice is epinephrine and amiodarone. Now the remaining two rhythms falls under cardiac arrest, asystole and pulseless electrical activity, also known as PEA. As we all know, for asystole, it looks like a straight flat line, no movement at all. Whereas in pulseless electrical activity, it looks alive, but it's not. The rate and rhythm is normal and slow, and P waves and QRS is present, but there is no pulse. How to recognize it? It looks like a normal EKG, but the patient has no pulse. Next tip for asystole is never shock asystole. Instead, start CPR and give epinephrine and check in with two leads before confirming asystole. And the NCLEX tip for pulseless electrical activity is, it looks good but it's not dead. Always remember that. Do not shock pulseless electrical activity. Start CPR and treat the cause. Think of the 5H and 5Ts, which are the common causes of this kind of cardiac rhythm. Now I hope you are ready for another question answer round. So a nurse observes the following rhythm on a patient's ECG. Which dysrhythmia does this describe? A. Atrial flutter B. Ventricular tachycardia C. Atrial fibrillation and D. Second degree heart block Now I'll let you pause and come back to me when you're ready with your answer. And the correct answer is C. Yes, atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is characterized by an irregularly irregular rhythm, absence of P waves and variable ventricular rate, often leading to a rapid heart rate. So, it wasn't that difficult, right? <laughs> Again, I'm telling you, just relax and chill. If you know the basics, then you will be able to ace the exam. Trust me, you will be able to. Chest tube management is another hot NCLEX topic and you need to know about this too because I think this is very important for you to know the different types of chest tubes and its functions and how we can manage it, especially the nursing management. Uh, if you want more materials on NCLEX prep, then please, please, please let me know. Comment below so that I can help you by providing you the material. I'm so happy that you guys reached out to me on my Instagram. And I guess I could help you with providing all the Marque lectures and booklets as you asked for it. Um, if you guys don't have it yet, what are you waiting for? Go and follow me on Instagram and ask for it. I'll be more than happy to help you with it. So again, without dragging further, let's continue with the chest tubes. The NCLEX will frequently test you for your knowledge of chest tubes because they are crucial in managing pneumothorax, hemothorax, pleural effusion and post-op thoracic surgeries. You'll need to know how to monitor, troubleshoot and recognize complications. Make sure to go through the different type of chamber chest tube systems. There are majorly three types of chest tube systems. Number one is drainage collection chamber. Number two is water seal chamber. And number three is suction control chamber. Here are the NCLEX tips for each chamber of chest tube. Make sure you know the normals. That would be enough. For suction control chamber, gentle continuous bubbling is normal. No tidaling is normal. For water seal chamber, intermittent bubbling is normal and tidaling is normal. Whereas for drainage collection chamber, no bubbling, no tidaling is normal. And pink drainage, which also known as serosanguinous drainage, is normal. 
Now let's discuss about increased intracranial pressure ICP. The NCLEX must knows. Why NCLEX asks about ICP? ICP is a life-threatening emergency seen in traumatic brain injury, strokes, meningitis and brain tumors. You'll need to recognize the signs before brain herniation occurs. Cushing's triad is a very important topic to cover under the topic of increased intracranial pressure for NCLEX. This majorly includes signs such as hypertension with widening pulse pressure, bradycardia with slow heart rate and irregular respirations which is also known as chain stokes or Bayard's breathing. Now the NCLEX tip for this is Think of Cushing's triad as the opposite of shock. In shock, there is low blood pressure and high heart rate. Whereas in increased ICP, there is high blood pressure and low heart rate. Ready for another practice question? While caring for a patient with a chest tube, the nurse notes continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber. What is the most appropriate initial action? A. Clamp the chest tube near the insertion site. B. Check the system for air leaks. C. Increase the suction pressure. And D. Notify the healthcare provider immediately. Well done guys. This is going to be the last question of this episode. So yes, pause and think about it and then resume it. And the answer is B. Check the system for air leaks. Continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber indicates a possible air leak in the system. The nurse should systematically check the tubing and connections to identify and correct the source of the leak. I hope you guys found this deep dive super helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel for more NCLEX hacks. Again, as per the ritual, Here's your challenge question for the next episode. So, as per the rule, here I am with the challenge question of the day. If you are sure about your answer, then you know what to do. Just comment and then get featured in my next vlog. I will answer the question in my next vlog of the series and explain it to you. Here's the question for you. What do you do if a chest tube gets accidentally pulled out? A. Cover the site completely with an occlusive dressing. B. Tape a sterile dressing on three sides. C. Place the client in a prone position. And D. Clamp the chest tube immediately. I'll be shouting out the first correct answer in my next video. So yeah, stay tuned for another episode on this series of NCLEX prep series where we will tackle about another major NCLEX hot topic. Can you guess it? And remember, nursing is all about critical thinking. Keep learning, keep practicing, and until then, I'll see you next time.